Hi everyone, I'm Steve Stoller. And I'm Shauna Haley, and this is Inside Plano, where we take you behind the scenes of our city. We'll introduce you to the faces and places who help make this a great place to live. And give us lots of reasons to love Plano. Well, hey, Steve Stoller. Hi, Shauna, how are you? I'm fine, I'm sitting here wondering what month it is, what day it is. <laughs> You know, I have completely lost track of time. It's ridiculous. You know, I can relate. It seems like all the days kind of run together, and it's hard to discern sometimes what day it is. That's true, but, you know, I do feel a little proud. For months now, we've we've been very scheduled on releasing daily COVID updates, but the podcast has kind of taken a back seat. We've been very faithful at recording a podcast every month, sometimes a couple, but it's hardly held to our normal schedule, and this month, we're finally back on track. We are releasing this podcast on the 1st of August, and it feels like just this small moment of normalcy, and it's so good. Yeah, any normalcy we can find today is a good thing. That's right. Well, let's talk about one normal thing uh, that's happening this month, because just because we have all kinds of things that are going crazy in the world around us doesn't mean that the business of the city comes to a complete halt. In August, is a very important month in the life of the city because it is, drum roll, budget season. Budget season. <laughs> yes, and you know, there's a little side note on that that I find kind of funny. You remember when, uh, when we started working from home, a lot of us men tried to grow beards. And for me, emphasis on tried to grow a beard. <laughs> so it didn't last very long. But I noticed that our city manager is growing a beard. And I asked him the other day, I said, so what's up with the beard? And he goes, oh, it's a budget season beard. So he says he'll shave it once the budget is approved. Well, let's talk through that timeline then, because people yeah. might wonder, is he going to have a mountain man beard by the end of this process? <laughs> so um, on July 30th, which is uh, the last council meeting of the month, and for people who might not understand, of course, this podcast is releasing in August. But in July, we move the council meeting dates uh, to allow for summer holidays. Not that anybody was able to really travel anywhere this year, but that's just part of the regular schedule for council. So we had two meetings the last week of July. On the last council meeting was the day that the city manager presented his recommended budget for fiscal year 2020-21 and the proposed community investment program. Those have been proposed officially to council for consideration. So what happens now? We're moving into August. That's right. August is a big month. We got uh, a public hearing that city council is going to hold on Monday, August 10th. And then we have the budget town hall, which is always interesting to hear from people on Thursday, August 13th. That'll be at seven o'clock. And then we have several other events after that. I'll let you pick it up. Sure. So the budget work session, that's always a Saturday event. That's Saturday, August 15th. And then we do have our public hearing on the tax rate. That's during a city council meeting, Monday, August 24th. And then, you know, we're, of course, council's continuing to have grant funding reviews. I mean, they're really digging into the details of the proposed budget all throughout August. Lots of opportunity for our residents to provide feedback. Um, please keep an eye on our social media networks as well because we have a link that we're posting there that you can easily look at the budget documents, read them in depth at your leisure. Uh, you can submit questions and we'll respond back with answers. We do that on a weekly basis. All of that culminates on Monday, September 14th. That's um, when council will formally adopt the budget, uh, the community investment program and the tax rate. So. Um, the budget officially is operational, so the new budget year starts on October 1st, so September 14th, important date. But that doesn't mean roll in on the 13th with your opinions. You know, a lot of things have happened before that, so we want to hear from you. So, you know, if you didn't listen to the July 30th meeting on council, go to planotv.org or go watch it on the city's Facebook page. Hear more about what's proposed and then get involved all this month. We want to hear from you. You know, there's another big event coming in August that will hold a little bit differently this year, but it's always an annual event that a lot of people look forward to, and that's Clear the Shelters. That's right. Well, and lots of people got new pets during quarantine time, but that doesn't mean that there aren't pets still looking for homes. 
That's right. This is actually the sixth annual Clear the Shelters event. And like I said, it'll look a little different this year, Shauna. There's no single day like there usually is. Uh, this year, Clear the Shelter will run from Saturday, August 8th to Saturday, August 29th. And adoption fees are only going to be waived uh, from Monday, August 24th to Saturday, August 29th. And there's yeah. a reason for that, obviously. Absolutely. I was just about to say that you mentioned at the very beginning, this is an incredibly popular event. Well, you can imagine popular event means a lot of people show up, a lot of people wait in line. That's not really something we want to have happen right now. We still want you to adopt a new pet. We want to clear out all of the adoptable pets from our shelter. Um, but we don't want you to be crowded up. We don't want to um, have your health at risk. So that's why it's over an extended period of time. So you can easily look at all of our adoptable pets through our pet finder page. And we have a link to that. I'll put it in the show notes. Um, check out your pet contact the shelter, make an appointment, go in, um, because they're going to follow social distancing guidelines. They'll limit the number of people, and you need to wear a mask when you're visiting the shelter. If you have any questions, you can always call the animal shelter. Let's give them that number. It's 972-769-4360. Can you give it one more time just for folks? Sure. Who are ready to go? It's the Plano Animal Shelter. The number is 972 769 four three six zero yeah some some really cute cats there right now i did sneak a peek at the pet finders page and thought I, the last thing i need because i am one of those folks who just adopted a dog during quarantine added to our little crew i don't need to add another cat but there's some very tempting kitties there that need a new home you know we are still kind of in what i call the weird land things are very different around the city but that doesn't mean that there aren't things that are uh, going on that you can do and enjoy. And in fact, every week we put out the Plano Online Guide. It's very similar to, for those of you who are of a certain age, like Steve and I are, it'll remind you very much of the old TV guide where you could see what was um, airing on television and what station it was on, but think of it in terms of social media. So we have all of the videos, free concerts, um, classes, uh, tours that are being offered, other programs. That's posted, we post a, an overall guide on Sundays and then every day they remind you this is what's coming on today. So you can find something new and interesting to do as you finish out the last bit of summer. I know school is getting ready to restart in mid-August, uh, but there's still plenty for you as well as for your kiddos to enjoy online. And we have an outdoor pool open and things <laughs> are going well since we opened it. It's the only open outdoor pool in Plano and that would be the Jack Carter Pool. And again, things are a little bit different because of the pandemic. You have to call first and make a reservation. Yeah, but I think people have really enjoyed themselves and that, yeah. that pool has done a great job of implementing safe standards. So that's been, it's been great, right? We didn't know if a pool would open at all, but that one was able to open and it's been a really good addition to summer fun in Plano. And we have great residents and everyone's been very cooperative. You know, we have three shifts that people can go to each day at the pool. And people have been very orderly, and they seem to really be enjoying themselves. And when the shift ends, they pack up and they go. No complaints or anything. It's going really well. Oh, that's fantastic to hear. Well, all of this is because of the, the five-letter word that we, <laughs> we feel like we say all the time, um, COVID. You know, we are still dealing with COVID-19 in Plano. Um, you know, Steve, you do a great job every day. Well, and I know you do it on the weekends too, because we need the information on Monday of collecting case trends um, and, and data to share out with our residents. I produce a new um, weekly report that looks back at trends. So that every day, you're, you're going to find that on our social media networks. You're also going to find it on our city website. And there are a lot of other resources that are available on the website. I mean, Steve, wouldn't you say that's kind of a hidden a hidden resource. A lot of people, we talk about the website, but they don't understand all of the things that are available to them through the COVID-19 website at Plano.gov. Absolutely. There's such a wealth of information there. You know, the, the FAQs, the frequently asked questions that you put together, I mean, that, that's an amazing document. It really is. I mean, it, it's kind of like an everything you want to know about every facet of a pandemic, all in one document. 
Yeah, I feel like I now understand all the ins and outs of how things are intertwined. And, you know, that FAQ document that Steve's talking about for our listeners, are, we share that out with our call center and our social media teams, because what we want is if you call and you have a question, we want to be able to answer it. So we have some very detailed answers. All of that information is on the website. We've just put it into the simplified FAQ for us to find things quickly. You know, as this situation has evolved, we know your needs have evolved please continue to check Plano.gov slash COVID-19 because that's where if you need rent assistance, if you need um, food pantry resources, if you need information for your small business, uh, if you want to know what the latest orders are from the governor, that's where you're going to find that information. Um, in fact, we now have a, a form online if, if you happen to have a gathering that you anticipate more than 10 people, you know, at least at the time of this recording, that requires um, special authority from the mayor. So we have a form there to, to simplify that process of how you work through that. So it's a great resource, plano.gov slash COVID-19. We'll put it in um, the show notes so that you can bookmark it and visit it frequently. Today, though, um, I'm going to hand it over to Steve because we actually have a panel of folks who are joining us on the podcast today, and it's COVID related, but it's also not COVID related. We thought it would be kind of interesting, and we hinted at it in our insert in Community Impact Plano and thought this is a pretty interesting topic. Maybe we should talk about it some more. And what is that? It's traffic. Traffic. <laughs> yes. Traffic and road cons construction, something that everyone has an opinion on. Yeah, so sit back and enjoy this conversation. We have three of our brightest team members who are overseeing all things traffic and road construction, and they're going to have a really great conversation with Steve. Well, I'm here with three gentlemen to talk about something that everybody has an opinion on, and that's traffic and road construction. But, you know, if there is some positive that's come out of this pandemic, this may be one few areas where something really positive is actually happening. So let's introduce them first. We have uh, with us Brian Shusky, who is our transportation engineering manager. Brian, thank you for joining us. We have Caleb Thornhill, who, who is our director of our engineering department. And then we have Dan Prendergast, who is the assistant director of public works. Gentlemen, thank you for being on with us on Inside Plano podcast today. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Well, let's start with uh, Brian, because Brian, you and I have talked about traffic before. What was the overall impact of COVID-19 on Plano's traffic? Well, the, the week of March 16th, if you recall, right after we had the national, the state, the county, and some of our local public health emergencies issued, our traffic volumes actually nosedived uh, to around 90% of our typical February traffic volumes. But keep in mind that during this, this same time, that traffic volume reduction uh, also happened to uh, in, happen about the same time Plano and Frisco spring breaks uh, started, and they extended in the extended spring break, I think, on the 16th. Uh, those, those two items, the spring breaks, usually see about a 20% reduction in Plano traffic volumes. So we had a 70% reduction uh, on the, the week of March 16th just because of, of COVID. But we've been slowly increasing our traffic volumes and we're around somewhere between 20 and 50% lower than pre-COVID volumes, uh, depending on what part of traffic, uh, or what, what part of Plano that you're driving in. Well, Brian, let me ask you this. I mean, obviously we have less cars on the road now. And from a road construction standpoint, there's really an opportunity here. What did the city do in terms of change to account for that low volume of traffic? Well, we actually did a couple of different things. Uh, once we realized the traffic volumes had decreased 90%, that, that first week during the, you know, right after the public health emergencies, uh, we reduced our AM and PM peak uh, signal timing coordination plans anywhere from 40 to 60, 60 seconds uh, lower than what they typically were. This basically allowed us to better handle the reduced traffic and keep our motorist delays down. Uh, but we also suggested that our internal and our roadway, CIP roadway construction projects be allowed to extend these construction uh, elements into the AM and PMP periods 
typically we would go to nine to four and, and we suggested that they extend that in uh, from I think eight o'clock to to five thirty uh, since the volumes were so much lower. Caleb, let me ask you this. That's an additional two and a half hours where the crews can be out on the streets doing the road construction. What has the impact been of having that extra time to work? Yeah, so, you know, what Brian touched on there, we were able to extend our typical hours, uh, allow the contractors to have additional lane closures. Um, the biggest benefit it provides to us is it expedites the projects. Um, we don't have any exact numbers. Uh, but projects we anticipate are going to finish a lot quicker. Uh, so, you know, whereas there's going to be a little bit more pain. And how are you staying on top of these changes as people start slowly returning to their offices? I think Caleb, so let me jump in. So a couple things that we're doing. We've been actually keeping tabs on some of our bigger Plano corporations in both both ISDs and, and when they're planning on bringing staff uh, and, and students back to their various campuses. Uh, that has a huge impact on our traffic volumes, uh, but we've also been monitoring our traffic congestion on a, on a weekly basis. So didn't know if Caleb or, or uh, Dan want to add anything on to that. Gentlemen, anything to add? I think you covered everything. Thank okay. you. Well, Dan, let me ask you this. A lot of construction going on in the city right now, as we were talking about. How are you keeping the crews safe? It's a great question. Um, first, I want to start off by saying the safety of our staff and the public is our top priority. We've been on staggered 12-hour shifts for several months now to allow for one person per vehicle instead of two. Encourage that, that uh, separation. Uh, vehicles are sanitized after every shift. We don't allow crews into our building in the morning or in the evening as we used to. We've also supplied masks and we just received these things called neck gaiters that go around their neck and they can pull up any on their face, which make it easier for them out in the heat to be able to wear a mask because those masks are very hot and you know, with the humidity and everything else, it gets very difficult to do that and breathe. We've also included having temperature checks daily. So we've done a lot of different things in the office and you know, with the crews to be able to allow them to keep working during this tough time. Other than the uh, situation with the lanes, uh, is there anything else with the construction that we're actually doing differently right now since there is less traffic, Dan? So with the construction, um, we definitely bid more work out this year. We had a higher budget, so we wanted to get that work out and had a lot of jobs come out in the springtime. Um, so it kind of worked with the COVID timeline actually. Uh, I will speak up too on the timelines. You know, we used to allow one more lane closure from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. And now with the, the extra two or three hours of work that we're getting per day, our monthly billing has increased substantially. A year ago, we were clearing about two million per month in contractor work. The last three months, we've been, been just under five million per month that we're spending on road work. So that's a huge increase, a double. And uh, we're very thankful to be able to do that. Um, even when the times you know, are, are like they are right now. Now I can tell by looking at all of you that you're in the office, so those dogs have got to be my dogs, right? <laughs> <laughs> Not here. Surely you don't have your dog in the office today, do you? Hey, no, I, mean, I will dogs. tell you that, <laughs> I will tell you that this technology is not my home technology. No, it's, it's not dog proof at all. Well, Dan, one more question for you. Last year, boy, we sure talked a lot about potholes. Uh, how are we doing on the pothole repair? Uh, we're doing fantastic. So last year, yeah, as you know, we, we did a survey of our major roads and found about 3,500 potholes that had to be fixed. We uh, fixed those repairs in about three months. We did another survey in January of this year and found only 600 potholes. So that's a very significant you know, reduction. Um, in addition, our time to repair potholes has gone from 20 days before the program started down to two days or less. Our total potholes in the system to be repaired have dropped from about 220 down to between 10 and 20, depending on what day it is, and our complaints have gone down. So I'm very happy with the progress that we've made on the streets with the pothole program. That's great news. And Caleb, tell us about some of the big projects that are underway right now in Plano. 
So we've got several going on. Um, probably our biggest roadway project is uh, Preston Road at PGBT. Uh, that's uh, some additional capacity improvements at that interchange. Um, obviously, we've had some benefit with the reduced traffic. We had a closure of NTTA or PGBT uh, on the toll road that we were able to manage, which would have been a lot more difficult uh, during normal traffic periods. Um, so that's going to be increased capacity southbound um, for that intersection or the interchange. Uh, we expect that to be done early next March, which is uh, basically on schedule. Um, we've got uh, the Allen Creek Mall redevelopment is still active. Uh, if you haven't been over there, all the buildings essentially are gone. Uh, we're still working with them. Uh, we expect that to continue on through the end of this year and into next year. And then um, we've got another larger project that will be um, adding pedestrian improvements at Legacy and the Tollway. And uh, we expect that to start here uh, early this fall, which will alleviate some safety concerns and provide a safe, accessible path from the west side of the Tollway to the, north, or to the east side uh, along Legacy Drive. Very good. Gentlemen, thank you so much. I, I really admire the fact that we're always looking for innovative ways to improve things. And I'll tell you, with having less traffic on the road, this is really giving us some benefits at the city in terms of trying to get those repairs, renovations, new projects done. So thank you very much for your time. We appreciate it. We have once again, uh, Brian Shusky, who's our transportation engineering manager, uh, Caleb, <laughs> Caleb Thornhill, Director of Engineering, and Dan Prendergast, our Assistant Director of Public Works. Gentlemen, thank you for being with us today. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. So, oh, Steve, it sounds like your dogs had a lot to say about road construction. They're not fans. They're very excited. They're very excited about it. They just couldn't, they couldn't hold in their energy and excitement about all the road work that's being done. That's right. Plano, we're just keeping it real. You know, we are all on the struggle bus on roads under construction with dogs barking and internet connections dying in the middle of Zoom conferences, just like you are. You know, it's just we're all doing the best we can. Right. Right now. We are. We are. Well, I will say before we wrap up the podcast. Um, there they go again. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Um, if people do want to know what's happening for road construction projects, you can get to that information on the website. I feel like a broken record as far as the website's concerned, but Plano.gov, uh, go to residents, uh, click on road construction, and you can see what's going on. Or even, even more simply, if you use the, the program Ways, our construction projects push right to Ways, so that'll help you know. Um, because the guys mentioned one thing, you know, they're lanes are closed longer so you might you know normally go right or left because the middle lane's closed well two lanes are closed they're getting things done a lot faster but that does mean if you're transiting through the area that might be inconvenient so find an alternate route um lord knows there's still not a lot of road uh road traffic so <laughs> enjoy it while it lasts right that's right hey another thing the census is still going on too yeah yeah so um we can put the link in the show notes. You can complete it online. I, I assume your family's already done it, Steve. I, we've done yes. it. Took no time at all. I, I think it literally took less than five minutes to complete our census. So Absolutely. Yeah, very, very short period of time. Yeah. All right. Well, Plano, we are grateful that we were able to uh, drop a podcast on August 1st and spend time with you. This has been a wild and wacky 2020. Um, we're glad that you've been able to see us in our homes and in our offices and heard our pets and um, know that we are just normal Plano residents like you all uh, trying to do the best we can. Um, so forgive us for any audio issues because we are recording outside of our normal comfort zone. We would love it though if you would leave us a review or a rating on whatever your favorite podcast listening platform is. It does help people find our show and we have been very thankful for the reviews left so far, the ideas for new show topics that you've sent us. And for those of you who are joining us, we've had an, a massive increase in listeners. And for that, we're very grateful because we're here to serve and answer questions and hopefully give you a little insight into how things are done here in Plano. Until next time, 
though, for Steve and for me, we're glad to be here for yet another month and take care and stay safe. Bye, everybody. Be well. And that's it for our Inside Plano. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did doing it. If you have any comments or suggestions, send them to us at askplano at plano.gov. Bye. Talk to you next month. The Inside Plano podcast is brought to you by the City of Plano 